Okay, look at 2 Corinthians 10, 8 before we finish with this little subject here. And again, if you want more on this, we have the, the Deceivers and False Prophets Among Us book. Two chapters in there titled The Doctrine and Deeds of the Nicolaitans thoroughly, thoroughly addressed this topic and really have set a lot of people free. The man I was telling you about earlier, his name's Paul, uh, down in Austin, Texas, that got the book Deceivers and Pro False Prophets Monks. He said he had been under a lot of spiritual abuse and those two chapters absolutely set him free because the truth in these, in the Word of God will set you free and it covers this, this topic thoroughly. Verse 8 of 2 Corinthians 10 says, what? For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification, and not for your destruction, I should not be ashamed. Boy, that nails it, doesn't it? So God gave Paul, the apostle, okay, authority for what? He even uses that word. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, given from God, he's talking about, which the Lord hath given us for what? Edify. To edify, to build you up. Okay? That's the purpose God gives authority, not to control somebody else's life. You see that? This is important. Now, this might not relate to you right now. Maybe it did sometime in the past. And most certainly, somehow, it may confront you in the future. And you're going to have to be ready. Because you're, you're submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ first. And never going to give up uh, your place with God to submit and your submission to God to submit to some man. And that many times can come very subtly. So you got to watch it. This covering doctrine, you know. Well, you need a spiritual covering. Uh, really? What did Paul say? You need a spiritual covering like they teach. Nowhere. It's nothing but a bunch of witchcraft that's uh, to seduce you to come under their control. Uh, here's another thing people do. They prophesy a lot in order to gain control over you. That's witchcraft. That's divination. What they're doing is trying to give you the sense that they really hear from God. So they're the spiritual one among you. You see what they're doing? They're baiting you. They're sucking you in. They're acting like they're the oracle of God. and Most of them aren't even in the word of God. So they have no business prophesying or acting like they're moving in the gifts of the spirit. Uh, I think it's Jeremiah 23 or is it Ezekiel 20, uh, 34 says they prophesy out of the deceit of their own hearts and they dream dreams and visions that are not of God and God has not sent them. But that man that will be used of the Lord, Jeremiah 23, 18 says you got to mark his word and hear his word, the written word of God. And that's the servant of the Lord, not somebody that's always got a word for you that's not the word. You want a word? Oh. Open Gen Genesis to Revelation if you want the word. It's amazing how many of those people don't give people scripture. And they, they, they use that to control other people's lives. Okay, that's really something we have to be careful of. When somebody among us comes among us and they're constantly saying, Well, the Lord told me this. The Lord showed me that. In other words, that, that, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a ploy to get you to believe that they somehow have this in line road with God and they're superior spiritually you see that have you, anybody ever, ever anybody else ever seen that I've been around a lot of that I didn't say God's people don't hear from the Lord we got to be real careful that we don't flippantly use his name in vain by putting his name on something that's really not his you know I better be careful starting with me that I don't ever say the Lord, I, I'm real careful. I should be real careful. We all should about putting the Lord's name on something. Maybe we could say something like, "I sense that possibly the Lord is leading me to do this." Very humbly. That's different than saying, "Well, the Lord said this. The Lord showed me that." You know, I looked to the left and the Lord showed me that. I took a breath and He showed me that. I walked through that. Day. You know, every, some of these people are very flaky that do this kind of stuff, and it's a ploy to elevate themselves above other believers around them to, to uh, uh, kind of in, in, in cue them in as to their great spiritual you know, insight and authority and calling. You know, everybody's a prophet and apostle and a bishop. These ladies are running around on the internet calling themselves bishop. You have got to be kidding. If that ain't Jezebel, nothing is. These people are absolute false apostles, false prophets, and self-appointed bishops 
a bishop must be the quote husband 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 of one wife how many people know that a woman cannot be a husband she's disqualified right there first Timothy 3 2 well that's oppressive no that's protective not oppressive that protects women they weren't called to be after the fall they're, they're to be loved cherished and protected by men as the weaker vessel and in letting them uh, suffering Jezebel that means allowing Jezebel to a, a woman to operate in a role that God didn't ordain a woman to, to, to operate in is throwing her to the wolves and it's going to cause great destruction in her life your life and everybody around he's going to kill her children with death Revelation 2 20 through 23 is got a boatload of revelation on Jezebel because Jesus said that woman Jezebel that's among you the Thyatira church Thyatira uh, seduces you seduces you to, to commit fornication and to teach uh, idolatry and ungodly things and I'm gonna kill her children with death because you suffered or you allowed it and then he likens it in verse 24 I think to the depths of Satan Wow if you've ever been around that you can agree that that's the depths of Satan the depths of Satan it's the only time that term is used in the Bible and it's related to Jezebel when men allow women I blame the men they allow women to operate outside of God's ordained role for women God's not a fool he made women and men for specific purposes and that's why we need the Word of God to find out what these things are you see we're here in 2nd Timothy 3 and that's what we're we're uh, our main text we're gonna we're back in chapter uh, 2nd Timothy chapter 3 okay I wrote down a note a while back you know we read earlier here about a form of godliness a form of God a semblance or formula when structure becomes an end in itself then you have a form you don't have God and, and that's what I was talking about earlier I, I think in my limited perspective uh, that a lot of Sunday morning stuff is pretty much staged man you know what I mean it's pretty staged God doesn't have a whole lot uh, a whole lot of uh, to do with it it's an agenda I went to visit a, a church so-called with a friend a really good brother he's a younger brother in the Lord about a year ago and uh, he goes well, what did you think about it and I, I said you really want to know and he's a really meek precious brother I said man that whole thing is nothing but a I can tell you that every time you go to this Assembly of God church and he had been a few times I said I can tell you without even asking you it's the same old song and dance the same people in three-piece suits uh, jumping up and acting this way and acting that way like blurting out in tongues and uh, it's a big show man that's all it is that isn't spontaneous really God's not gonna do all that stuff the same way every time that's ridiculous we gotta let the Holy Spirit lead us and be authentic and uh, do all things as unto the Lord and not unto us some kind of a pattern or formula verse 6 here says uh, <clears throat> for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins led away with diverse lust ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now as Janus and John Breeze withstood Moses these are the three guys that uh, did witchcraft in the days of Moses so do these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith they've fallen away they departed from the faith as Paul said in 1st Timothy 4 1 verse 9 but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was now I want to something I've been meditating on and I, I see it right here you don't see Paul praying for false prophets there's not one instance where Paul now he marks eight of them in this little book this little book of 2nd Timothy has four chapters and in each chapter he names literally names like he did in verse 8 Janes and Jambres two guys two false teachers two people that were operating in witch, witchcraft in the days of Moses he names eight people in this little book we've got an article on the website called naming names 
is it biblical? And it has circulated all over the internet. It's really uh, quite a crowning jewel on that specific, particular subject of an article. And it really spells out clearly that we are to mark, as you said earlier, those who uh, teach contrary to the Holy Scriptures and are operating and bringing division, heretical division among the saints and not according to the scriptures okay so Paul in verse 9 says these guys are going to proceed no further for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was sounds like a prophetic word he's you know and he's I believe speaking this forth on these guys now notice in the fourth chapter when he's talking about Alexander the coppersmith who did him much evil right in verse 14, Alexander the Co he names this guy, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at verse 10. Demas, he named him. That's the two in that chapter. If you'll study this book, you're going to find two <coughs> people of various sorts of and kinds of deception and false falsehoods and false prophets in each of the four chapters. You, I want you to circle those and cross-reference them. And you might want to look up that... Uh, Feel free to look up that uh, article on safeguardyoursoul.com that's uh, called Naming Names. Is it biblical? And there's a search window, okay, that you can look it up on because there's a lot on that site. Okay, so he says, Alexander, verse 14, the coppersmith did me much evil. Has anybody else had an Alexander the coppersmith in their life? I sure have. I've had some people that have befriended me only to try to make up things about me and attack me. But I tell you what, God used that to really help me get on the cross. Amen. So Al there must, perhaps we could say there must come the Alexander Coppersmith in your life. If he hadn't come already, he probably will. Jesus said, all manner of evil shall be spoken about you if you follow him. Really, if you aren't being persecuted, I think it's a, that should cause some concern. You're not being fruitful in the Lord. and Fruit only comes out of relationship, right? So if I have a relationship with Christ, I don't know about you, but I have some better days than other days. Amen. <laughs> I wish all of my days were really on fire for the Lord, but sometimes they aren't. But I, I do hope that I can look into my life and see that I've got enough of God in me, Sister Cynthia, that it's my cup is running over on other people. That I'm sharing Christ. And sometimes when you do that, you're going to be shunned, Jesus said, and put outside of the company of others. And also, all manner of evil is going to be spoken about you falsely but rejoice in that day for great is your reward in heaven it's a token of the love of God and the seal of God upon your life amen the presence of God in fact Jesus warned in another place woe unto you when all men speak well of you for so did their fathers to the false prophets uh, that is Luke 6 26 I believe it is okay Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil not a little but much evil that's strong the Lord reward him according to his works that sounds kind of imprecatory to me that sounds like Paul is saying Lord let him reap what he has sown Paul didn't pray for this guy it sounds like he's pronouncing judgment on this fella in fact I I dare say we might want to look at another witness here on that okay the believers bible commentary has a little note here on second timothy chapter 4 verse 14 with the alexander the coppersmith uh uh verse where paul saying he's did him much evil what's that say brother matt it says alexander the coppersmith may have been the same one referred to by paul in first timothy 1 verse 20 as having made shipwreck of the faith in any event he had done great harm to the apostle we can only speculate as to the nature of his evil. Linking this verse with the verses that follow, it seems probable that Alexander testified against the apostle and brought false charges against him. Coney Baron Housen translate, Alexander the coppersmith charged me with much evil. The apostle is confident that the Lord will repay him according to his works. 
Amen. Thank you, brother. Uh, you know, some people are of the of the opinion that uh, Paul is talking about future <clears throat> judgment. I kind of wonder personally, and I would lean this way. Uh, think that Paul might have been talking about here, uh, and I haven't researched it as deep as I could, but uh, that that God would let this guy reap what he had sowed you know quickly and expediently so he could do, be uh, incapacitated from working more evil on other people and that's not so much of a vengeance of a personal nature necessarily as a concern for others if this guy Alexander the coppersmith is doing Paul much evil and then in the next verse he actually warns the other believers about this guy uh, I believe Paul may have been praying uh, pers uh, possibly uh, like David, you know, a lot of imprecatory prayer by David in the book of Psalms that the uh, the, the angels of God would persecute the wicked and would uh, harm them and destroy them. And uh, it's violent yeah, when you read through the book of Psalms. Also in Galatians, the Apostle Paul says uh, to the Galatians concerning the false teachers who were leading them astray and actually had caused them to fall from grace. So they were actually no longer in the grace of God, saved by the grace of God. Galatians 5 4 he wanted them to be he would that they were even cut off that's a violent term Paul was desiring that those guys were even cut off okay so for, verse 14 of 2nd Timothy 4 says Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his works of whom be thou aware also for he hath greatly withstood our words so he says, beware. I want you guys to beware of this guy. He marks him right here. Remember what Romans 16, 17, and 18 said? Mark those, scope them out, and name them, identify them among the believers. Uh, mark those who cause divisions contrary to the doctrine, which, you, you know, you've been taught. Okay? For they with good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. That's Romans 16, verse 17 and 18. So Paul is saying, this guy did me much evil. He made up things about me. He charged me with much evil. Okay? Uh, that's the work of Satan. He was the accuser of the brethren, according to Revelation 12. Okay, you, you beware of him also. You see that in verse 15? I want you to be aware of this guy. This guy is a wolf. For he hath greatly withstood our words. Okay? And then he goes on to say, uh, at my first answer, no man stood with me. Anybody else ever been alone? As far as men go, but watch this. But all men forsook me. All men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be, may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Amen, huh? The Lord stood with me. When all men forsake you, the Lord will stand with you. If you're his child, amen? If God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord is on my side, David said, I shall not fear. What can man do unto me? Psalm 118, verse 6. Notwithstanding, this ought to give us all comfort. We ought to get familiar with these verses. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Hallelujah. Verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so. Another way of putting that is Jesus and myself become a majority. Yes, amen. So we're back in 2 T Timothy 3, the chapter before. And uh, in verse 10, the apostle writes, he says, But thou hast fully known. Remember Jesus said, You shall know them by their fruits. Paul gives us some specifics here. But thou hast fully known my what? What's the first thing he mentions? Doctrine. Doctrine. The word doctrine appears 51 times in the Bible. That alone tells you how important that is to God. it is to God. Correct, sound doctrine. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, character, uh, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, which is like love in action, amen, patience, persecutions, afflictions. So there's like 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine things here. Doctrine, you've fully known what? What have we fully known about Paul? You know, Paul wrote in another place, know those who labor among you. We've got to be a little bit more mature. I've, I can be blamed for, for, for making this mistake myself, where I meet somebody that I really like right away. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? And as a Christian, you have that loving, endearing, non-critical, non-assuming disposition, which you should. But we've got to be wise. Paul said, know those who labor among you. We've got to be careful to let people prove themselves. You know, and here's some criteria right here. What is their doctrine? What is their manner of life? 